Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to be looking at um, the measuring the ESR of capacitors and what's prompted me to want to do this is this is um, a 50 plus 50 microfarad capacitor that I removed from a, an old valve radio. Now the radio itself is 1948-49 vintage and this capacitor, if you've been watching that series on, uh, on me looking at that Pi radio, um, this component was has got the logo RS on it, radio spares or RS components that it is these days. And I was pretty sure this isn't um, an original capacitor. I guess it's fitted maybe 60s or 70s, something like that. Either way, it's, it's at least 40 years old, maybe more. Um, and it tested out okay. So I just wondered, does my test gear telling me the truth? Um, and so that's what this video is all about. So let's get the scope fired up and um, take a look. Okay, this is the arrangement of the circuit and I've borrowed this from uh, W2AEW's rather excellent video. I'll put a link to that uh, in the description below. And essentially what we've got is uh, the function generator here producing a one volt square wave with um, the bottom line being zero so it's it's all there's no negative component to the wave uh, that 50 ohms there is the um, is simulating the output impedance of my uh, signal generator which is indeed 50 ohms and then we've got the capacitor here um, which we're testing and our question mark there is effectively what the equivalent series, series resistance is um, at 200 kilohertz, which is the frequency we're using, that capacitor, a 50 microfarad capacitor, should effectively appear as a dead short to that to that AC voltage. So any um, voltage that we can measure across here um, is going to be proportional to that resistance, and then we can simply use a version of Ohm's law to find out what that resistance will be. So that's that's the plan, and what we're going to see on the scope. Is we're going to see initially the square wave and then when we put the capacitor in we should be able to see how the waveform changes as a result of the capacitor being there. We can use the cursors to measure uh, the difference and then we can calculate R. Now the formula, fairly straightforward again, um, just in case maths frightens you to death, I'm no, no expert on it, but the unknown resistance or if you like the, the ESR in this case uh, is equal to uh, the voltage the frequency generator produces minus the measured voltage uh, and then on the top of the equation the voltage measured times 50 that's the impedance and the um, output from that equation should give us the equivalent series resistance. So let's uh, have a look at the scope and um, see what that looks like. Okay well here's the uh, scope and uh, the function generator here is feeding the scope with um, a one volt uh, square wave um, and it's offset um, by about one volt so, in the, so there is actually no negative component to the uh, uh, to the signal and that's deliberate so to avoid reverse bias in um, an electrolytic uh, or a polarized, polarized capacitor uh, with 200 kilohertz and as you can see we're about one volt um, and so now what I've got the arrangement here is as per the um, circuit diagram that I described earlier uh, and I've got a couple of leads here and I've got the component ready to test so I'm going to connect um, negative lead to the common which is that one and then I'm going to connect uh, positive lead to the one of the other tags in actual fact if you look just to just to show you both halves of the capacitor produce a pretty similar trace now I'm gonna just uh, lower that down a little bit and I'm going to um, increase the volts per division so we can get something meaningful to measure um, and if I now just pause the display so that discrepancy in voltage there between the top and the bottom is effectively uh, is the ESR and if I put a couple of cursors onto here um, and we'll make that voltage and then lower down the top cursor to there and then 
lower the end cursor to there. Uh, we've got an offset there of roughly roughly 10 millivolts. Um, so we'll we'll do the maths on that. Uh, but that's actually um, extremely good. Uh, you'd expect a, a brand new capacitor to give a, a similar arrangement. So let's just get a brand new capacitor and um, see how that looks. Okay, so I've now got up to a 47 um, microfarad. Uh, it happens to be a 50 volt. It's the nearest value I could get to, to 50 microfarad that was new. And as you can see, um, again, if I tweak the cursors a little bit, um, that's saying about 18 millivolts. So it's very similar to the um, the capacitor, which which in my opinion is um, 40 or 50 years old. Uh, which is sort of quite surprising really. Okay so you recall the circuit diagram that we've just been um, looking at on, actually on the scope and that formula. So plugging the numbers in we had a difference of about 10 millivolts. Uh, 50 ohms is the uh, output impedance of the signal generator and then on the bottom here it's the total output voltage minus the measured voltage so that's uh, 1 volt minus 10 millivolts and what we get when we when we do the math there is 0.5 ohms uh, and that 0.5 ohms should be the equivalent series resistance of that capacitor. Now I've got one of these uh, Chinese uh, meters which are very um, inexpensive and uh, when I put that same capacitor on here uh, I get about um, tells me it's about um, 0.8 ohms ESR um, and I've done that measurement with two or three different capacitors just to see if this um, really is giving me something that's uh, somewhere near and I think the short answer to that that question is yes it is actually this might be cheap and cheerful Chinese component checker um, but it's certainly um, telling me um, something which approximates to the, the truth um, so quite encouraged by that and remarkably um, everything that I can check about this rather ancient capacitor suggests that it's still alright um, but there is one other test we can do and let's see what happens when we do that okay so here's my uh, one of my multimeters and I've got the capacitor uh, hooked up to that and I've got it on the 2 mega ohms range and as you can see uh, it's telling me that um, there isn't any resistance there in other words it's, it's open circuit and if I go to the 20 mega ohm um, I get a similar thing too and that's since this meter will be using DC to make that measurement that's that's I guess what you'd expect because in fact effectively a capacitor as far as DC concerned is concerned should be open circuit um, and it's tempting to think okay well actually there was no need to change that capacitor but I think it is possible to maybe get a slightly different story if we now turn off the normal multimeter and I'll, I'll use the same leads so that we're not in any doubt and this um, is uh, what's sometimes called a mega or a mega ohm meter and what this does um, is it simply measures mega ohms as it says on the tin but what it does is it does it at various voltages 250, 500 and 1000 depending on your choice um, and important thing to remember here is that capacitor is rated for 350 volts so we ought to be getting um, a very high resistance certainly uh, above well at least 10 mega ohms I would say um, so if we move that to the 250 volt range and in a moment I'll, I'll press test and we should get open circuit um, uh, but uh, as you can probably tell um, I know that we're not going to so this is a, a bit of a more realistic test because this capacitor essentially did work with voltages of about about just over 200 so let's switch on and straight away you can see that's actually telling me bear in mind that's reading mega ohms so that's telling me it's about um, there's about 60k ohms there um, which 
isn't very much at all really so at 250 volts suddenly we've got quite a lot of leakage across, across, the, di across the dielectric of, of that capacitor so I think at its actual working voltage it wouldn't be performing quite as well as some of these tests that I've produced actually show um, yeah it's fairly steady there around about 50 60k something like that and I get a similar result on the other half as well keeping my fingers well away because there is um, 250 volts on there but as you can see valve equipment routinely uses quite high voltages and what might be okay in a low voltage circuit certainly um, isn't necessarily okay in a in a val valve circuit okay that's it for my little journey of discovery in testing out this um, capacitor removed from a, from a Pi 19D radio and even though I don't believe it was the original um, it's still at least 40 years old maybe more um, I'm, I'm guessing but I think I'm, I'm probably right in saying that so definitely needed to be swapped um, and what is interesting something I've learnt here is that uh, just because the low voltage testing says it's okay when it comes to actually testing at the service um, uh, voltage range in this case over 200 suddenly we start to see um, yes it's not quite as good as some of the test instruments would um, have us believe it is so uh, bear that in mind if you're working with valve equipment uh, where those voltages of course are fairly routine um, just recommend again W2AEW's excellent video on um, capacitor ASR measurement using the oscilloscope uh, an actual fact all his videos are excellent uh, but it's definitely worth uh, looking at that one I'll put a link uh, in the description to that below so I recommend you watch that thanks very much for watching and a special thanks to all the um, recent new subscribers um, thank you very much for that um, that gives me some encouragement to try and produce some more interesting comment if you think it's worth subscribing so that's great if you've liked this one please click thumbs up if not click the thumbs down Put your comments below, whatever. It's all good. We're all on a learning journey together. Thanks very much for watching. And we'll see you on the next one.